One of the uh, most important things that we want to do when we set up our Rhino environment is to set it up for uh, image output. In this case, we're going to be working with the viewport renderer, which is constrained by principally by the size of your monitor, actually, and by the size of your Rhino workspace. Mine is also constrained because I'm capturing video from this, so uh, it's uh, uh, it's set up for the size of uh, the window is set up for the size of my video. And then if I were you, I would maximize uh, my window size so that you get the greatest number or the largest number of uh, DPI's that you can for your individual windows. And what we'll do is that we're going to use our properties windows to set the size and proportion of our, our windows so that they match an 11 by 17 format. And once we do that, I'm going to show you one, how to create a new viewport, which actually creates a new physical window uh, viewport that you can use in dock like any other viewport in Rhino that will be listed along here. And, um, but that just saves the physical a viewport and then I'm also going to show you how to uh, create what we call uh, what we call name views set view name views how to create name views that uh, we can um, then use as we do in Keyshot to actually save the composition. So it's important that you understand the distinction that when you come over here and you create, like, so this is listed here. So I could create a new viewport, right? And dock that window over here because it's going to have the properties of the window that was active when you created it. And I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to set the view to per perspective. And now I have a new perspective window that I can use here and uh and so one way saves the actual physical window but when you use the uh set view name views that actually saves the window and the composition so i prefer uh i use the name views a lot uh and i use the other uh just for as i'm working so you hear you could go from here to there and like so and 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 there there we have it uh, and so we're going to talk about a little bit more about how we do this uh, adjusting this size and the size of our larger window to bring those both into that proper 11 by 17 proportion so that when we output our um, we output our files they are the proper size one of the first things that you want to do is to set up your environment for rendering uh, with the viewport. And it's important that you establish an 11 by 17 workspace in order to do that. Now, um, the way that we do that is by sort of defining the size of our viewport window and making our viewport windows proportional to an 11 by 17 workspace. Now the way that this is done, and we're going to delve a lot into like our properties uh, during our work now because we're stepping a little deeper into Rhino. And if we click on this window right here with everything else turned off, you'll note that uh, the, the size and width of our window is 539 by 326. And what we want to do is that we want to bring that into an 11 by 17 uh, proportion okay so uh, I'm gonna try um, let's see uh, so let's type in we're gonna come over come down here and we're gonna open up a utility that is on the course blog site um, and this utility is our aspect ratio calculator okay we're gonna use our aspect ratio calculator and what our aspect ratio calculator allows us to do it allows us to calculate uh, we set in the 17 by 11 proportion and allows us to calculate our aspect ratio. So if we typed in 539, let's say, that means that uh, the bottom right here would need to be 349. I'm going to take the smaller value. I'm going to do 326. And this would be 504. Okay. So I'm going to type in um, right in here 504 and hit enter. Okay, and that brings me to uh, 326. 
uh, right here. And if I um, readjust my window right now, so this is 504 by 326, and I can confirm that that is in fact the proper aspect ratio. So I'm going to close that. So that uh, solves the problem for our four view viewport. Now let's go into our large scale window and right now you notice that this value is 1012. Now let's uh, take a look uh, once again at our aspect ratio calculator and see how that value uh, jibes with our um, with our recording. So right here let's type in 1012 and this is actually this needs to be a 10 12 655 so that works out really good so now we're at a, we're in an 11 by 17 aspect ratio so we're good so now what we want to do is that we want to save uh, these views okay and there are two different ways that you can save them okay uh, one way is to come down here into perspective and you're going to create a new viewport uh, right here and we're going to call that, uh, and we're going to set the view to uh, perspective. And we're going to call that view render, or we'll call it shot one. Okay, and we're going to move this over here. With our shift key, we have shot one. Okay. Uh, and this is one render view. So that's one way that we can save. We can have a view here. So we can go to perspective there. That's 1022 by 655. And that's also set up there. And also, if we were to minimize our windows here, we can dock this. I like to dock this right on top of that. And so that's the proper proportion. And that's good. Uh, the other way, so we create, we can click on a view. Uh, and create a new viewport layout and that'll dock it along the bottom here. Another way that we can do it is to come over here and do view, set view, and go down to name views. And this allows us to save shots like in KeyShot. So we'll save this as um, render one. I'm going to call this render one. Okay, and it saves that. And if we, uh, right now that we have a window render one there, um, and we maximize that, and that's the proper proportions uh, there. Okay, uh, and so in this manner, we can begin to uh, save our save our views and, and get back to um, uh, views that we set up. And I, I like to, I like to I prefer to use the um, I prefer to use the uh, render. Uh, approach to name views approach so like here I would go set view and I would go to name views and I would call this one render 02 so that way I have a bank of these in here that I can always uh, get to and then I can come to my perspective window do whatever work I need to do in my perspective window and I can go over here render view set view and my name views are listed over here, render one and render two, and I can get to them. But that's a good way to set up uh, your uh, initial rendering environment uh, in Rhino for 11 by 17 output. Now, the final step, now that we've set up our window of viewports to be uh, 10, 12 by 60, 655 or an 11 by 17 aspect ratio, tabloid aspect ratio, uh, the next step is to uh, define our rendering output, which is separate from our viewport output. They're two separate things. One is, a, you can think of it as an advanced screen capture at 72 dpi while your render settings you can adjust those to really high resolution uh, settings for your output so i want you to uh, understand in your mind that they're two separate things and the way that we access our render settings is going up to our menu here our standard menu here and right clicking on this icon the render settings icon now you note that right now the size of our render settings is 1012 by 655, which matches our viewport. So we want to lock that, okay? And now that that's locked, that's locked at a, an 11 by 17 
ratio. So let's, so right now, the advantage of doing that is that if we do a render, let's say we did a render of this. And that brings up our render uh, of this image. One of the things that we can capture uh, is an alpha channel. You notice that there isn't one there. So let's go back to our render settings and look at here. And what we want to do, and the good thing is for the alpha, alpha channel is that we want to have uh, the ability to have that transparent, that alpha background, okay? So we want to turn that off right here. And so we can also have, a, we have a wide variety of settings that we can set here. And we're going to delve a little bit deeper into this later. But for right now, the main one is to capture your uh, transparent background because that allows you to render an alpha channel, okay? Uh, and so here we go. And so let's try another render of our object. You notice that now it's on a back background. And when we click that, we have an alpha channel, which allow us to create masks of our viewport compositions. And that's why it's really important. You note that the image size is also 1012 by 655. And that adds a layer of power. If you just do that alone, that is going to increase the sort of like creative potential of what you're able to do because you'll be able to, in Photoshop, you'll be able to mask out your composition from the background and you can almost now treat your... Um, as we'll talk about later, it, we're going to treat our viewport renderer as a renderer and passes renderer that we use to define our own unique artistic style. And that's why it's really important that you uh, set your render settings, that in your render settings that you lock in your aspect ratio and also that you select transparent background because that allows you to deliver alpha information to the renderer that you can use in your backdrop renderings. And I just want to show you something here. If I were to change this to 100 dpi and I change this right here to, um, to 1700, 1700, I've got... Uh, over here, I've got a 1100, which is basically 11 by 17. So it holds true and I can size up my renderings if I wanted to, but that wouldn't match my viewport size because they're two separate entities. The viewport size operates within that 72 DPI video space. And so if I type back in 1012, it brings this back to normal, and there's a one-to-one -one match between my renderer and my viewport so that now I can um, sort of even use the capabilities of both for uh, compositing and creative efforts downstream, upstream, I'd like to say. Okay, and, and we're going to talk more about this in detail uh, in some of the later videos that I produce. Enjoy.